lesson that anyone can learn from traveling around, living the home free lifestyle, living out of their vehicle, whether they choose to do it voluntarily or you know it, it's something that just happens to them. They become homeless because of some unfortunate event. The most important thing to learn is how people in regular society, those considered normal, those that aren't considered crazy, those that aren't considered well-adjusted to this society, if you can call it that, we can see how they are kept in line. We can see how they are kept under control. We can see how their programming is held intact. Because when the threat of homelessness is dangled in front of someone, unless they're, they're willing to tap into that inner strength, to persevere through the experience, to not lose themselves, unless they're able to do those things, it's more than likely that a person will continue to be a slave, to give away their energy and their time to someone else, for someone else's project, and there's nothing wrong with working. I've spent most of my life working for someone else. But that's been part of the problem. You know, for years, I tried to go the easy way out, and the easy way out for years was not opting out of the system, it was participating in the system. And for years, when I launched outside the box, I worked at a job that I hated. And I worked at a restaurant. I gave over five years of my time for a restaurant that I know did not appreciate my presence there. Especially with my controversial background, saying the things that I was saying about 9-11 and other things on Access Community TV. I was considered a liability. It's not the first time in my life that I've been considered a liability because of my outspoken nature. So there are people that might assume certain things when they see someone living the home free lifestyle. When they see someone walk away from certain things that most people would never walk away from in a million years because they don't know how to, because they've been programmed that if they ever wear the label of a homeless person, bad luck will come upon them. And we know how society treats the homeless. We understand the stigmas surrounding homelessness. And by the way, I want to thank those that have reached out, those that have been living the home-free lifestyle that, that either are or have in the past or know others that have suggested that, that I do an episode when I, when I come back and do the show at PCM, do a full episode on homelessness in America. And I think that, to go back to where we started this video, the most important thing that anyone living the home-free lifestyle can learn is how people in society are kept in line and kept under control. The fear of losing something, the fear of not being able to get enough credits to pay their rent for something they'll never own. This is profound. And what this does to people psychologically, these environments, these highly competitive environments, when people are competing for resources that they are told are scarce. While they are herded into the city and there are less people living off the land, the environments play a huge role on the level of consciousness, on the vibrational frequency in these urban centers that could be happier places, that could be far happier than what is expressed today. What is expressed today? Fleeting moments of pleasure and sensation. From drink to fuck to smoke to the next hamburger. It, it, it's fleeting. I do see the positive in civilization or in, in, in society, I suppose, in Portland. But what people don't want to hear is how the programming that people are under, that hypnosis, it's that programming, it, those are the reasons why we are in the society that we're in. Self-responsibility is the key. I'm not a perfect person, but I'm, I'm sure convinced that my life and the experiences 
that I've been having are there, are destined for me to, to find a way to let those experiences help me evolve to a higher state of being, to go through those experiences in order to have other experiences. It, it, it's part of moving upward, not, not regressing or staying stagnant. Evolving as a soul, evolving as a person, evolving as a spirit, however you want to interpret it. And when I look at the world that people call normal, I see stagnant waters, nothing's moving, people are regressing, people are losing their humanity, their, their imagination, their creativity. And I don't believe that they're all soulless, but aspects of, of, of people in the society seem to act soulless at times, and threatened by those that have spirit. All I know is I'm living this experience for a reason. And there are newspapers like Street Roots in Portland. There, there are homeless advocates out there. This is a good thing. I think, though, it's important to understand, though, why so many people follow the rules of this matrix. Follow the, follow the, the insane instructions from the authorities how we see so many people submitting to the system. And of course, there's been a big upsurge in people being aware that they are not those capital letters on their driver's license. This is fundamental. Of course, what does that matter? What does that matter to someone making $100,000 a year in the system or $200,000 a year? But I'll tell you what, as more full-time workers go to part-time, uh, as more people play that game of musical chairs and they end up being that one to lose their job and they weren't expecting it. They weren't wanting to go off the grid. They, they weren't wanting to you know, be a part of a community, but all of a sudden shit started happening and, and, and they lost what they did not think that they would lose, what they would lose, regardless of whether they're a fan of the current president or not. There's a lot of people that have been surprised by their current economic situations. Talented people, people with master's degrees that have found themselves competing with other people with master's degrees for minimum wage jobs, for fast food jobs. Uh, the situation is, is different in different regions of the United States. But there are a lot of people that have had to face the cold facts of the current reality. And the truth is these are still the good times. These are still the good times, but I think that there's a whole point in, in learning from our experiences. And what we can also learn is that once we, once we adapt to a certain way of life, there's no fear. There's no fear any longer of losing our sanctuary when we have to make the world our sanctuary. You see, having a home, it's about having that luxury to where you can shield yourself from the rest of the world and live a private life. Have your shower, ha have your bacon and eggs, have your refrigerator, have your luxuries, have your computer, have your cake and eat it too, and have a nice big bed for you and your mate. And have all the wonderful things, and maybe if you're lucky, your, your place in the matrix can earn you a reality where, hey, maybe it's time to have some kids kind of expand the reality create that is not for everybody that cannot live that lifestyle and I, I know some people don't want kids and some do <clears throat> but regardless we're in a day and age where the uh, at the very least the scarcity of resources or illusion of scarcity of resources, the manufactured competition for resources, it's caused a strain on a lot of people that normally would be having children and would be having families, but instead there are people that are uh, just, just, just moving their bodies faster to make that money to feed only themselves and close only themselves and down the list it goes selfishly based and that's what I see when I see what Portland is becoming and what it has become and what it's been for some time 
and I understand people's decision to not necessarily have a family, you know, and it, it, it's not really about that, it's more the divided nature of mankind and womankind. That's what all this working has done. This perception of scarce resources, real or manufactured, the, 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 even with the official view of reality that we're going to run out of a, of a certain amount by a certain time, well then that should trigger some innovation. People truly working as a community to move in a whole new direction. Even those that believe the official view of what is causing climate change or that which they call global warming. There could be mass movements to get off the grid, off the land to develop our own systems and our own structures. Because ultimately that is the solution. Whether someone's concerned about that, the climate change, or other things, or what the government's up to, or what they're teaching in the public educational school system, or the chemtrails over a lot of the urban areas, although you can't ex exactly escape it when you go into the rural areas, No matter what someone's motivation, there's there's a benefit. There are benefits to being able to live within an independent community or society, as well as a larger society at whole, uh, at large. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video with the sharing of the idea that all this information comes down to that. reaffirming understanding that at some point we're going to have to start functioning outside of the world that we once lived in. The way that we exchange money, the way that we grow our food and, and somehow distribute our food amongst ourselves, the, the way that we communicate with each other. A lot of people don't like each other and have issues with other people because of the programming instilled to us by this world. And so it's difficult to get some people to get along. As Rodney King said, can't we all just get along? A lot of people have, have felt that Rodney King moment when they've tried to get people together in a community only to see heads butt over who's going to be in charge. There is this aspect of our human nature that is not fully addressed by so many humans alive today that want to have their own community. And, and, and it's, it's that power tripping, egomaniac, sociopathic aspect of humanity that always seems to rear its ugly head through the vessel of a friggin' human being. So we constantly have to deal with ourselves, that side of ourselves. And it seems like we are constantly having to challenge that side of ourselves or keep that side of ourselves in check if we're to live a free life. We've got to be responsible for those aspects of ourselves that want to be in control. And we need to be able to see where there are other people playing games as well, whether we like them or not. We need to be able to see things as they are or seek to see things as they are. So there are a lot of people out there that say they have a community, that they have a work trade thing going on. And, and, and it may be something far different than that which they're describing on their Facebook page. Use discernment. Very much so in this day and age, as more people are going to be seeking to exit the matrix and go off the grid, there are going to be a whole bunch of people out there, they already are, that'll say, come on over, oh, we'll, we'll build some earth ships over here. Here's a shovel, start digging. <laughs> and I've met those people in the desert. And I met other people that are good people, but they're mostly self-serving. They say they understand the community, but all I hear is I, I, I. And that's one thing I've, I've started to notice more and more when I'm uh, scoping things out or checking out certain situations is how, how much they're willing, how much they're able to have a dialogue, back and forth conversation about our, our mutual goals and interests, how we can help each other, not how there can be some sort of a, a power play, you know, playing games here, seeing who can get what from who, and some people like playing games, and people will go back and forth playing games with each other, trying to up one another. That's a mind fuck I'm not into. So, in this whole adventure, there's a theme 
that relates to my soul's evolution. It, it, it's the ability to adapt from situation to situation to situation. Use discernment in these different situations that are off-grid living situations with other people. Uh, there's opportunity.